Welcome back everyone to Factorio Demystified, diving into mid-game science choices, that is blue chemical science. And this is going to be a much different episode than usual, we're not actually going to be adding anything physically to the factory, just looking at what our options are going forward. Chemical science is really a point where the options spread out quite a bit. I'm not going to be dogmatic or recommend one specific path. Depending on your play style and your setup, there are a variety of viable options available to you. We're rewinding the clock a bit to right after setting up the chemical science pack production. We've got our advanced oil processing in. I still recommend that for everyone. Get your inputs, outputs set up for that. Use your oil more efficiently. And for most players, I think you're probably going to want to go to mining productivity as well at this stage. It's a nice longer project to run while you're setting up that oil refining. And even if you're not going for low pollution, low evolution, you're still going to get a lot more out of your resources by heading that path. After that, I would say there are probably five different options really worth considering in terms of more game-changing type of advances. Not the ancillary upgrades you can get any time, like lab research speed or better braking on your trains to make them more efficient or inserter capacity bonus, but things that are going to make a bigger difference in your factory. The one that I've chosen, we talked about this a little bit last time we touched on research, is advanced material processing too. And that's to get the electric furnaces, get out of burning coil for the smelting and lower that pollution. But if you're planning on sticking with steel furnaces for the rest of the game, or even for just a while longer, and then adopting electric at a future time, then you're really not going to want to go into this right now because it doesn't lead to anything else of significance. We've got the production science pack and a bunch of endgame items, but those are off our radar for the moment. If you're generally comfortable with how your factory's running, you think it's pretty secure, you want to go for the next big step that's going to make the biggest difference for you, then I'm definitely going to strongly suggest robotics, which is the most popular one at this point. And you can really get into this fast. Lubricant, that gives you a very cheap research there. Another cheap one, electric engine, and that gets you into robotics, which isn't that expensive either. The robot frames, you see the top three ingredients they were already producing, and the electric engine unit, of course, is the research that's directly above it. And that gets us into logistic and construction robotics. The logistic robotics there, you can see it's for inventory management. They'll bring items to you and they'll put them in storage as you direct them to. A significant ease of use improvement so you don't have to go wandering around the factory getting all of the supplies that you need. They're brought to you. Then construction robotics allows you to build and repair automatically via robots without you having to do it yourself. And this is not just for small construction projects. There's a blueprint tool which you can use to slap down entire production lines, big sections of your base. You can just tell the robots to go do it while you go work on something else. Without question, robotics is a major game changer and rushing for robotics has been a major strategy in the Factorio meta for a long time with good reason. But perhaps you're concerned about the security of your factory. You're having trouble fighting off enemies or you're having trouble clearing out the nests that are nearby. If you find yourself in that situation, I would suggest going to Military 3. And we're directly going to get a couple of capsules we can throw out and also the combat shotgun. That isn't really that impressive in my opinion, but going to the tank is the quickest way. And this is a big upgrade off of our car automobile. We again are already producing all of these different ingredients that it requires, so it's no big deal to put these together. We've got three different weapons there. It's larger. It's more durable, it's also slower, but much more powerful than the car is. But that's not our only choice. We can also continue fighting on foot. We have power armor available. So that's the next step up from modular armor. It's got about twice the size for the equipment grid and some additional equipment that it can use. We would also have to go to the advanced electronics if we're going to go this route. And that's gonna require us to get the processing unit, the third tier, of the circuits after the electronic circuit and the advanced circuit. But with the power armor, we're going to potentially be using a better energy shield, a better battery. We've got a couple of items that can help us defend against nearby enemies. Personal laser defense is always quite popular. Discharge defense is there as an option as well. And we've even got an additional combat robot, the distractor, upgrade from our current defender. And then we of course have the usual Upgrades to flammables, to shooting speed, projectile damage, upgrade to how many combat robots we can have at one time. Upgrades to the explosive there. 
There's also things like the exoskeleton additional equipment we can have to help us move faster. So a lot more options with the modular armor and with upgrades to our military capability, whether it's on foot or with the tank. The fourth option is to go for our third and final type of power, which is uranium processing leading into nuclear power. The advantage of nuclear power is that it can produce a lot more for a given space than either of the other types. And it's also clean like solar is. Now it's a little more complicated to set up. There's some lead time. We've got to grab uranium. But if you don't want to keep expanding a steam power plant or you don't want to lay out just farms and farms and farms over a very large area of solar power, then nuclear power can help you scale up to the needs of an increasingly mass production factory without having that much space required. And the final option you might want to consider is modules. We can reach the second tier of all three module types, efficiency, productivity, and speed. I'm not going to find as much use for these as I did for the first tier, but particularly if you're aiming in the productivity direction, wanting more free resources, then going up to the second more powerful set of these can really be beneficial. I will, of course, be getting into details on recommendations for all of these, starting with electric furnaces in the next episode. Till then, thanks for watching, everybody. Factorio Demystified will return.